Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. Santa Monica Airport runway shortening halted by California District Court. More than 150 amendments to AIRR Act filed in Rules Committee. PC-24 Super Versatile Jet Update Certification Imminent. Hello, I'm Laura Hudson. It's October 11th and this is Airborne Unlimited. A federal judge has issued a temporary restraining order halting the shortening of the runway at Santa Monica Airport, which was scheduled to begin Monday, October 9th. In his order, Judge Ronald S. Liu, senior U.S. District Judge, said that the agreement reached between the FAA and the City of Santa Monica violated California law, which requires public hearings on such issues. While the California Public Utilities Code does imply allowance for adoption of settlements in closed session, it cannot be construed to empower a city council to take or agree to take as part of a non-publicly ratified litigation settlement. Action that by substantive law may not be taken without a public hearing and opportunity for the public to be heard. The judge said that because the city entered into the settlement agreement with the FAA without holding public hearings, they were likely to lose any case concerning the agreement in court. The order effectively stops the runway construction project, but Judge Liu also ordered the city to show cause as to why it should not be restrained and enjoyed in the same manner pending trial of this action. Defendant must file its response, if any, no later than October 13, 2017, at 4 p.m. If you are wondering why the AIRR Act funding the FAA was being delayed again, it might be because members of the House have offered 158 amendments to the bill. Though 51 came in after the October 5th submission deadline, and six have already been withdrawn. In other words, it's a mess. But it also gives the aviation world a peek at some of the boondoggles and pointless pet projects that we'll have to contend with in the coming years. Among the positive amendments filed is one from Congressman Peter DeFazio to strike air traffic control privatization and insert H.R. 2800, the Aviation Funding Stability Act, which provides a stable, predictable aviation funding stream by taking the airport and airway trust fund off budget. Another one, not so positive, sponsored by Congressman Stephen Lynch, would direct the FAA Administrator to identify and facilitate opportunities to develop and execute memoranda of understanding between the FAA and state and local authorities that operate airports to reduce the overflight noise impacts of aircraft operations resulting from the implementation of next-gen procedures. The Rules Committee must establish a procedure for debate, including the time allotted on the House floor for each amendment. No date for the floor debate has been scheduled. After the break, PC-24 Super Versatile Jet Update. Certification imminent. A new high-powered version of our popular USB charging ports. The True Blue Power TA202 Series High Power USB Charging Port simultaneously provides 3 amps of power per port, offering an extensive list of single and dual USB Type C and Type A configurations The TSO-certified TA202 powers current and next-generation personal electronic devices, including phones, iPads, and laptops. Available from your local avionics dealer. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. In collaboration with NASC, introducing Sonics Aerospace, bringing you the Teros Group 4 UAS, the redesigned Tiger Shark Block 4, and the Subsonics Twin Jet UAS, all derived from flight proven manned systems, not concepts, real aircraft. More at sonicsaerospace.com. The PC 24 is on display at this year's NBAA event with the expectation that Pilatus will obtain the type certificate for its super versatile jet in December 2017. a spoke with Pilatus' Tom Aniello on the floor of NBAA 2017 to get more details. 
a certified PC-24. When, when is it going to be, and more important, when do we get to fly it? Exactly. Yeah, well, it's, uh, we're approaching certification. Uh, we just uh, crossed over 2,000 hours in the flight test program. We are confident we'll have it in December of this year. So we'll have the first handover of the first PC-24 to PlaneSense in December right after that. This has been a long process, and at the same time, you had a stake in the market that was a stranglehold on rough and ready, go fast, go far, land anywhere type airplanes. The 24 was a whole different aspect of a mold that you developed. Are you happy with where you're at? Yeah, definitely, and it's interesting you say that because the first reaction a lot of people had when we introduced the 24 is, what is Pilatus doing making a twin engine jet? You know, you've always made single engine turboprops. And I just ask people, just stop, think about what the PC-12 does, what the Porter does, all that utility, the cargo door, the off runway performance. When we polled and, and surveyed a lot of our customers, all they wanted was to go faster. And we thought, well, 20 knots faster, 50 knots faster, how do we differentiate it from the PC-12? We settled on 150 knots faster. So then we looked at single engine turboprops, twin engine turboprops, single engine jets, and ultimately realized that the best configuration for that is a twin engine jet. So think of it as a 50% larger PC-12 that goes 150 knots faster. And that's how it fits into our lineage or our brand, if you will. For the first airplanes coming off the line, when you start talking to the pilots and the people who will be operating them, what is the thing that you think will wind up being the distinguishing factor in how they evaluate the airplane? Yeah. Well, I think, first of all, people will start comparing specs. And the first reaction somebody may have is, okay, it's 10 or 20 knots slower than something else in the price range. But the reason for that is you get it back on the approach end. You know, it's an 81 knot stall speed. You know, it's a 17 and some thousand pound airplane. So what that does is it allows people access to many more runways. We've calculated about double the number of runways when you factor in the short distance and whether it's grass or gravel. So we think it's really going to create a new paradigm in flight operations about how you can use this, whether it's in a corporate operation or charter. All of a sudden, there are a lot of places you can go to. It's 2,700 foot balance field length at gross weight. I mean, and you've got a giant cargo door that you can throw things in. So it's not only been corporate operators, a number of government and special mission operators and air ambulance entities. We've got a lot of potential markets uh, that we're eager to explore with it. With some 2000 Aero TV programs webcast to cyberspace, sometimes it can be fun to look back and enjoy some of the places we've seen, the flyers we've met, and the planes we've flown. Here's a look at one of our favorite Aero TV classic episodes. What we did is that uh, we're kind of the, uh, the, the aircraft builders for Cubs that kept the traditional design of a Piper J3 Cub or a Super Cub. So we want to keep those simple things and how the airplane During flew. Sebring 2015, ANN stopped by the Legend Aircraft Company to talk about their line of Cub similar aircraft. He was fortunate to link up with Darren Hart, the owner of the company. Search the Legend Cub just a little bit better than the original Cub on Aero TV's news channel. After these messages, Cape Air Firm's delivery schedule for P-2012s. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Based on the popular Sling 2 LSA, the Sling 4 was designed to be the most practical and desirable lightweight four-place experimental aircraft on the market. Find out more about this 115 horsepower turbocharged airplane at airplanefactory.com. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. Technum has announced the conclusion of an agreement with U.S.-based commuter airline at Cape Air on delivery schedule for the first 20 of 100 Technam P-2012 Traveler aircraft. 
The production of the Next Generation 11-seat P-2012 Traveler has been much anticipated by many airlines, who have been demanding a replacement for the hundreds of heritage airplanes in the FAR-23 CS-23 category. The FAA has granted an STC to Universal Avionics for the UNS-1XW SBAS Flight Management System and Honeywell RCZ-833 transponders to meet the U.S. and European mandates for automatic dependent surveillance broadcasts out in 2020. JetBlue, in partnership with Atlas Air Worldwide, transported more than 100 tons of much-needed supplies to Puerto Rico over the weekend to aid in relief and recovery efforts. JetBlue previously outlined its 100 by 35 JetBlue commitment to launch 35 initiatives over 100 days and beyond to support the immediate needs of crew members, customers, and communities in Puerto Rico. Astronics Corporation has announced that more than 2,500 of its enhanced vision systems have now been installed in rotary and fixed-wing aircraft. Astronics MaxViz is thrilled to pass this milestone and anticipates that our device will become even more recognized throughout the industry as a vital component of flight safety, said Tom Geiger, business unit manager of Astronics MaxViz. Sectrans Elaine Chow is the latest Trump official to come under the scrutiny of some media outlets for her use of official government aircraft. Chow has flown on two Gulfstreams owned by the government and two leased Cessnas in the past eight months. All of the flights have been vetted and approved by the Transportation Department's Ethics Council. Marianne McKernany, a Chow spokeswoman, said that the secretary uses commercial flights whenever possible and normally flies coach. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. DJI has launched a new local data mode that stops internet traffic to and from its DJI Pilot app in order to provide enhanced data privacy assurances for sensitive government and enterprise customers. Local data mode will be available in the next update on the DJI Pilot app on Crystal Sky and for select Android tablets. When an operator activates local data mode, the app will stop sending or receiving any data over the internet. We are creating local data mode to address the needs of our enterprise customers, including public and private organizations that are using DJI technology to perform sensitive operations around the world, said Brendan Schulman, DJI's Vice President of Policy and Legal Affairs. Since local data mode blocks all internet data, the DJI Pilot app will not be able to detect the location of the user, show the map, and geofencing information, such as no-fly zones and temporary flight restrictions. In addition, it will not notify drone operators of firmware updates. Telemetry data on flight logs, such as altitude, distance, or speed, will remain stored on the aircraft, even if the user deactivates local data mode. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. See you tomorrow.